Hey everyone, it's Dave here from Banner Badgers and this, whoops, <laughs> again, every single time something has to go wrong, right, anyway, this is the uh, Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen Steel Edition from our friends over at Beetle and Grimm's, uh, they graciously sent me a copy, um, Banner Badgers, myself, Dave and Steve, we didn't get to work on this one, um, so again, thank you for Beetle and Grimm's for sending it over. This is not one that we've worked on. We have worked on uh, some of the boxes and the Absalom box and bits and pieces with Beetle and Grimm's uh, just by helping them out, which is great. Uh, we love doing it. Uh, but you didn't actually do this one, but uh, it's a thank you for working out. Now, sometime in the spring, we're gonna be launching our Dragonlance campaign. And this has arrived just in time because we are gonna be doing it. You may have seen, you probably have already seen this. You, you probably know and heard of this. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, Dragonlance 5th Edition, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. This is the regular book, the regular edition book. Um, I thought it was a fantastic little story. I'm a big fan of the original Dragonlance, Cameron and Wrestling, Tannis Half Elven, Flint Fireforge, even the Kenda. <laughs> uh, but I've absolutely enjoyed this kind of story. So it was great to see this has, this surprise has arrived in the post. We will be incorporating the Steel Edition into our online game it's an online stream now these games are uh, the beetle and grim stuff are fantastic for around the table and um, now we, while we will be playing that in a separate table game we are going to be doing this online initially so we wanted to showcase as much of this as we can to uh, a wider audience rather than just you see us playing around the table with it and seeing photos you want to show it off but anyway so you might not see this video that we're doing now um straight away in fact by the time I think I'm gonna show this video, um, so this turned up at the weekend, I, I'm unboxing it now. I've already gone through and unboxed it anyway for myself because I couldn't contain myself. Um, <laughs> so uh, this video um, will probably go live maybe between, I don't know, chapters one and two or maybe it's chapters two and three. There's a lot of spoilers in here. So um, if you're a DM and you don't want any spoilers for your players, don't share the video but if you do like all the stuff that's inside if you're just curious do stay stay watching remember while you're watching this on youtube uh do like and subscribe we're trying to get to a thousand i think we're at like 740 at the moment something like that 730 740 uh we're trying to get to a thousand um because why not now on the back of the box this is the same the same box so if you're familiar with uh was it the legendary edition of um curse of strahd from beetle and grimms or even the, the Sinister Silver Edition of the Secrets of Saltmarsh. Um, I think they've been great editions. Uh, Eberron is, is a similar size to this. This is the Steel Edition. Now, I'm a big fan, big, big fan of the Platinum Editions because you get huge maps. So I'm going to be quite, I'm quite interested to see what was inside. Again, I've already had a look. I've already unpacked everything. Um, but I wanted to show you, I wanted to share it because it's going to be part of our Dragonlance series. Now, on the back, you've just seen that. You've got this wood effect um, over here. That's because at the very beginning of the story, uh, the parties go to a place called Vogler Village, or Vo the town of Vogler, and it's the Kingfisher Festival. And this is a wooden crate. I'm trying to get a really kind of good picture. It's really great, a lot of color on here. Now, I've got the lights in here shining down, but there's a lot of dark, a lot of browns on here. It's, it, it, it looks gorgeous, and it kind of got these scratches and things. This is a crate um, that houses a suit of armor for one of the NPCs that the characters will get, get to know and love. And it's just in, in, embossed with the, uh, the Kingfisher. So you can actually even just use the box itself. You don't have to just use the handouts inside. Even the box gives you something. Now, um, again, great kind of uh, pattern on here. I love that. That'd be great as a tattoo. Um, now, on the inside, the entire box, the uh, the inside of the bottom box, inside of the top box, has this effect. I, I love this. If you want to show off what Dragon Scout kind of looks like, here it is. And I absolutely love that. I think it's great. The printing quality, um, like the, the photo quality of this, is astonishing. Lots of highs, lots of darks, lots of tones. It's really, really nice. There is no way that this camera is going to pick that up. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention, if, if, I'll put it up here somewhere, um, if you're interested in watching our Dragonlance campaign, again, 
Um, I'm doing this video well in advance, so it may be a while before you see it. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. I'm just going to try something new. But up here you will see um, links to our Dragonlance campaign. So inside of all of the Beedle and Grimm's products, you get this. This is a, a handout sheet that is has a letter. I'm going to fold it because it's, it's mine now. Right, so this is the letter. Um, I'm not going to read it out. You can you can pause the screen if you want to have a have a read of this. But uh, you always get a, a letter from the guys. You got Bill, Charlie, John, Matthew, and Paul. Then you get what's in the box, which is a breakdown. I'm going quite high. Let's go. Zoom. Let's go in a bit more. There we go. So you, then you get a breakdown of what's in the box. You can Dragon Lance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen, Calamari Military Token. The amulet. These are all the artifacts. These are the metal pieces you get inside. Um, here's the breakdown of the modules, which is always nice to see. We get some area maps, some dungeon maps, you know, handouts, encounter cards. Here's a list of all the monsters you get and all the encounters. There you go. Draconians are listed because we need we need them. We need those draconians. And then we start getting into the box itself now. Kind of zoom out and zoom in a little bit just to see it all work. There we go. Uh, this is this is newish. Uh, they started to put this into their recent boxes, which I really do like. So there is a ton of handouts in this book, uh, in this box. And sometimes you can get lost with how much is in each chapter. So uh the the book itself is broken down into all the stuff that you can use and then chapter three is actually when the adventure starts so then you, here's all the bits you can use so it says over here you've got the vogler area map you've got some artwork that you can give out you've got some uh in-world handouts these are all the letters and flyers and things that you get there's the, the kingfisher crate you see as i just mentioned the dm aid is always good and encounter cards. So here's a list of all the encounter cards you might need for the first uh, first part of the adventure. Even though it says chapter three of the book, it's first part of the adventure. Um, there we go. We and, it, and, and that's it. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm not. I'm gonna. Tr I don't know. Try to avoid spoilers. I guess. Um, also, I mean, we don't want exactly my players to see this uh, as such. But um, yeah, we're, we're kind of. We kind of see how it all kicks in, how it all kicks together. Anyway, I love that. I'm just gonna make a pile of stuff. <laughs> just gonna make a pile of stuff there, really, uh, and and see how this all kind of works itself out. The what else we got? People of Crean at a glance. Here are all the dwarves, the elves. So I, I didn't mention that. So Dragonlance is set in on the world of Crean. This is not. Forgotten Realms. This is not the D&D you've been using to. This is like Eberron. This is a, another world. So things are slightly different. In this world, there aren't there aren't halflings as such. Um, they call them Kenda. So they're kind of similar to halflings, uh, but different. The same, but different. Uh, so we have that. People are crying. It's just a breakdown again. DMAs that you can kind of put behind the DM screen. City of Calaman. This is one of the biggest cities uh, in Kryn. This is where most of the adventure is kind of kind of takes place. You kind of start in a small town, then you move to a city, and then basically you save the world, you know, as, as you do. But it has a breakdown of the various places you can visit, as you can see there. The Tatler, the Smithy, the Taverns, which is nice. Organization of Kryn. So you, this time you get a series of knights, and you see uh, orders of the of the robes there as well. Now the knights and the magic organizations they work very differently uh, in in the world of Kryn. Um, so it's definitely worth having a read up uh, magic and, and knights there, or check out our uh, live stream. You'll find it was it's a live stream on Twitch, but it's also on YouTube. You can check it out there. So that's that. Now. As I mentioned before, this is the the book, as you probably know and, and love and recognize. Okay, that's it. 
But what Beetle and Grimm do, if you didn't already know, um, which is something I love, um, it's something that if you if you've been a, a fan uh, for of D and D for a long time, that modules used to come like this. Okay, they were never hardbacks. They used to come like this, and I, I love that. And what uh, what Beetle and Grimm's do uh, that no one else does is they break down that big hardback book into individual chapters or into individual modules which makes it much much easier for you to manage or give to players and, and things like that so here is the stuff nothing is taken out nothing is uh, rewritten or recreated it is all of there i mean look at this artwork absolutely gorgeous it's all there in a nicely printed and presented book for you to to use and i like that i like that a lot um, so and this one because this is the chapter one character creation I love the fact that your artwork just wraps all the way around it. I mean look at that fantastic gorgeous um, You can give that to your players. So when you're sitting around the table pass this around uh, Let let them enjoy the story and the background for the world of Kryn what the differences are I think they would really get out get a kick out of it. Uh, my players certainly did so I, I, I'm really keen on using these then you have um, the kind of intro to the story. So you've got chapters one and uh, one, two, and three um, of the book here, you see. But Prelude to War is where it starts. And that is um, is really, really nice. These are just some uh, kind of session zero elements that you can use. You can see it's, it's very reflective on the camera there. Look at that. Again, great artwork lovely story there's a ton of stuff here and all of this artwork that's in these in the main book and in these modules is uh reprinted on separate sheets so you, you as a dm you can put them on your dm screen or you can pass them around the table really really nice they've really thought about how to handle this book and what i like about this is also um the price point it's much more affordable than the platinum editions uh, and you get a ton of stuff in it so this is the book i'm gonna, not going to show you all of them this is the book, um, all broken down, and even the appendices. So if you think about, um, here's your mag magic items, here's some encounters, here's some psychics, here's some NPCs. It's all here in a separate book, just like, so you don't have the main hardback book, we got flipped backwards and, backwards and forwards. You can have everything in here at your fingertips, just to decide, it's very, very lightweight, which is, which is great. I love handling that one. Now, there is, I, I, we're 10 minutes in, there is a ton of stuff in here, but here are some of the artifacts. This is um, one of the reasons why I love being Grim stuff so well. Here is the symbol of Kalaman, uh, the city of Kalaman. Look how thick this is. Uh, let's get one of these, whoops. Okay, this is how nice this stuff is. Look at that. And on the back you have the, an Esquire of Kalaman. So when the heroes, you can see some of the ridges on there. Look, I mean, this is properly molded. Um, the Squire of Calaman. Again, you can hand out to your players. This is a badge or token that represents they are now an Esquire. Um, essentially two functions. And you can use this in any game. Any game is a nice kind of handout. I really like using these. I use a lot of them in various games. Here's your symbol of Tachesis. Uh, the holy symbol there. Uh, use it as a key ring. Uh, which is really, again, really nice. All the Dragon Army soldiers, they have this emblem on their armor. Um, and really nice to see. And there, there are opportunities in the game. So when I talk about the Dragon Army soldiers and what they're wearing, I can put this up and show them. Uh, when uh, when a hero, a character, a player may find a holy symbol of Zagisus, here it is. So they've got something they can actually hold and feel. And it's it's you know, gorgeous. You can see, even to some of the texture there, the light is picking up some of the texture. It's a lovely piece. There you go, size, size of the of my hand. Here's a symbol of uh, Paladine, or Paladin. Really, really nice. I like how that works. And here is one of the coins. Again, really nice. Really, really nice. I love that. Now, I was talking about the artwork that's inside. Um, here's some of the artwork from the book. So they've uh, repurposed this. They give you some disc, um, some descriptions on the back. Here's some Knights of the Crown. 
Knights of the Rose, Knights of the Sword. Now this is for if you're a, a character who's a knight. Here's some, this is useful information for players and DMs really, of what they're for. And you just get a nice, a nice picture, a nice piece of artwork. If you're a mage, you get the order of the black robes, the white robes, and the red robes. And on the back, you get a breakdown of each one, what they're on about. And I love using this artwork. So in our game, uh, our wizard Fizzwiz, he's, he's got this kind of book. Um, and I love that. I mean, look at this. One of the, the if you're a, a wizard or a sorcerer um, in your Dragonlance campaign, or if you think about starting Dragonlance campaign, uh, the wizard has to, one of the first missions the wizard gets is to carry a scroll case from point A to point B. Um, and it, it, again, some beautiful artwork, really nice. These are all holy symbols, by the way. Again, you could use these in different games because they are just pictures of holy symbols. There you go, Takesis. Absolutely beautiful, nice presented, nice size. Uh, and these are just some blank ones on the back, just to keep it like sturdy and together, which I like. Again, we go on more. If you're a fan of Beatles and Grimms, you will know about the encounter cards. If you're not, I'm going to quickly whiz through these. These um, are the stats. So your monster encounter stats for NPCs, monsters, and everything else. These are presented probably the similar size or same size as what you might find in the monster's manual for 5th edition. Plus, you also get the descriptions of whatever else it might be. And you get some artwork. It's a, a triangle thing. It's just folded paper. So, uh, folded cards, a lightweight card. So, you can drape this over your DM screen, like so. So, you as the DM, you can still read all the stats. And the player side, they get the nice artwork on their side. Okay? Nice and simple, isn't it? I think so. Um, but what I've done is all the additions that I've, that I've collected since Beat and Grimms have started, um, is to put these, I use these a lot. I find that those Gale Force 9 cards, the monster encounter cards, they're a little bit too too uh, too small to read, especially if I put them in as initiative trackers or just in front of me. I find it a little bit too. Hard. I'm getting on a bit, you know. I'm, <laughs> I I need I wear glasses anyway, so having this at a much larger font size, uh, just just the same as I said, just the same as the monsters manual. I enjoy that much uh, much much more, and I use these in all of my games now. So things like ghouls and zombies, which I'm always using. Um, you'll get the regular monsters in here as well. So here's a ghost, for example. And that way, if you've ever got a ghost in your campaign, you can use these cards. So you just drape those over. It doesn't matter that it's got different artwork. Um, a lot of the artwork and a lot of the monsters are, are obviously book specific. But look, there's a wraith. All the stats you need, all of the description, and some gorgeous looking artwork. I mean, look at that. Um, if you know that I'm a good, fa uh, a big fan of uh, a good fan, a big fan of undead storylines, uh, this one is specific to uh, Dragonlance. You can see here as I go through some. Look at this! Look, a red sla uh, slard with uh, the tadpole thingies. Oh, that's so gross! Look at that, and you got all the stats that you need for it. See, it's all there listed, and again, you can use these on anything, which is what I do. So again, you can see some of the artwork. Look, an adult black dragon. All the stats that you need, lifted directly out of the monster's manual. Um, red dragons. It's a wormling. Flame skull. That's a classic. Great work. Absolutely love it. What's that? Air elemental. All the details you need are there. I'm not. I'm not expecting the uh, the stuff to focus on these too much. But you get. Oh, look, there's a black pudding. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. So you get a lot. In fact, you get 60, 60 encounter cards, and every edition you get more and more, every uh, Beal and Grimm edition, I should say, you get more and more and more to add to your collection. So uh, the collection is now getting quite big. Um, I would like to have some kind of container for those uh, at the moment. I just have a small box. But uh, yeah, I think that is something that I could use in the future. Beely Grimm. Who knows what could happen. Now, here is something that is unique 
to the Beetle and Grim. So we've seen we've seen the artifacts, that's great artwork, but we get that in the book. If you want to use it, you can use the Monsters Manual, you can use the Game Force Nine cards. I prefer these, but this, this is, um, haven't seen this in, in, in any sets. This is a uh, mission report field book. It's slightly textured on the print. This is specific for Dragonlance. Um, you've got the Calaman symbol there. And slight spoiler, the heroes will eventually become part of the defenders of Calaman, Calaman City. And they get given uh, a mission report log. Where this would be, um, and for my players, this would be a great keepsake. So when, when my players eventually get to, to play this on uh, around the table, I'm going to I'm gonna fill, get them to fill this in. And I think it'll be a, a really nice keepsake once they finish the campaign. They can keep that and they can kind of look back at their adventures that they went on, uh, who lived, who died, what was their treasure, their mission log can go in. And you get a few pages in here. Um, there you go, double page spread, mission report, mission date. Lovely. It's really, really nice. I would like to see more of that. Um, I, yeah, things that you can, your players can keep uh, if you if you allow them to. Um, that something is, is specific, that's a nice size. I absolutely love that. And I don't know if you can buy additional copies of these, but I would like to see that. Beetle and Grimm's, uh, Bill, if you can make that reality, that'd be really nice, I think, that you could buy Another pack of five. I have six players, for example, but I think if you can have a, a, a pack of five um, that, you could, that you could purchase online, I think that would be great. That would be beautiful. Thank you very much. Now, as I mentioned, the artwork from the book. So, uh, Beel and Graham, this is just a piece of cardboard. Uh, Beel and Graham have also done this in, in all of their previous sets since the very beginning. Uh, this is artwork taken from the book, and it is double sided, and it's just atmosphere. Atmosphere artwork to show to show off what's there. Now on the inside, it has the artist's name. Uh, it has the the chapter and the page of where the uh, where you might find it. And that's really really nice. There you go. There's branded D and D on there as well. So here's here's the uh, here's some scenes. So this is from the kind of a session zero, if you like, if you run that. And here's a scene from the the a midway point of the first part of the adventure. And that is a, that's a funeral boat. So that's the reason you're going to Vogler, is uh, a funeral for a friend. And here you get some lovely artwork. Um, is it gonna, well you know it's about dragons. I don't think there's any kind of spoilers in here as, as such. If you've got the book, the book is already in there. All these artwork is in there. Uh, lovely artwork for NPCs all around some really 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 nice stuff you get a few of those now here it like just like this but here's a bigger piece this is like the big finale so spoilers people you have been warned i'm going to open it up this is a, an a4 into an a3 so a3 folded it's a lovely gorgeous piece of artwork you've got the soldiers of calaman on the battlements of calaman castle or around calaman city and here you have this floating uh, a f what, floating fort coming towards them, the dragon shadows. I mean, absolutely gorgeous artwork. Incredible, there you go. The Siege of Calaman. Um, one of the final uh, chapters, well it is the final chapter, but one of the final scenes um, that you get, well leading up to, to the final scene if you like. Absolutely gorgeous artwork, fantastic. Now. Here's some of the good stuff. So in the books, you will find um, that there are particular handouts. Now, what, the, what the, the main book doesn't give you is the actual handouts. They have, they have like, some printed pictures of, of some, uh, some handouts. Let's see if I can quickly find one. I bet I can't. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So they have had this. Here's a, here's a letter, okay? So you've got that in the book, and you can you can pass that around, you can pass the book around, or you can read it out, or you can reprint it, everything else. That's fine, it takes time. Here, all of that is done for you. Now I'm gonna get the camera a little bit closer so we can start to see some of these in more detail. These are lovely handouts. Um, so you have some of these letters which are, use this kind of template here. This is the dra uh, Dragon Army letters. There you go, see? 
lovely symbol there. And you've got here's, here's some of the, the fonts that they use for the writing styles. Some of them differ. I'm not going to read them out to you. I'm just going to show you some examples of the handouts themselves. So again, this is uh, letters between and uh, message, mess messages between the army, a uh, dragon army soldiers. Here we have. Here we go. Is a is a, a hand sketch drawn uh, outline of Will Watch Outpost, which is nice to see. All this is is chapter one, by the way. Uh, or the very start of the game. There you go. The really nicely written. I mean, it's all kind of. It's uh, some of the paper is textured. They're, they're different types. Like this one, uh, this one that has a rough texture. Obviously, different coloring. You can see that. Um, all kind of parchment styling. I mean, look at the two here. Parchment styling. Uh, using different fonts for handwriting styling for different characters. It's really really nice. Uh, nothing on the back of this one. Sometimes um, we're playing Frost Maiden, and sometimes there are like, newspapers and there are bits of uh, bits of writing all over the place. You've got to track them down. But look, really, really nice. <laughs> you can see some things have been like crossed out. I I, I love that. It makes it a bit more real. We've got some blank ones in here as well. Um, I'm not sure if that was a mistake or if that's just extra ones for yourself. But you can see, look, look at the, the colouring on that page to make it look like parchment. And it's different. No, no, they're not exactly the same. It's just, a, it's just a, the sheet of paper that it's printed on. I love that. Um, some more letters again. Not going to go too much into the detail. But using different fonts. I'm going to say, this one, um, look, has it been printed upside down on purpose? I don't know. Ooh. Here we go. Really, really nice. Really nice stuff. I'm not going to dwell too much on there, but you can you can see the, the difference on these. Um, again, look. Look at the quality of these. Different sizes and shapes as well. They're, all, they're not all kind of A4. You can see, look, different cuts and sizes. Uh, makes it far more interesting on a gaming table when you've got these. I, me I remember my favourite one is... Um, Secrets of Salt Marsh, and it was the captain's log kind of thing, and uh, it was brilliant. It was like water damaged and all crinkly and, and everything. It was gorgeous. You can see they got a wax seal. And it's not a real wax seal; that is just printed. But you can see there how nice some of this stuff is. You might find uh, here's here's a, the menu list, the price list in a shop, the blacksmith shop. There you go again. This one on the back. This is Cadmos and Tia. Uh, Tereas. This is the Hammerstrike Cousins. Another, another folded letter. Look, I like this. Really, really like this. And we're showing these off again in our Dragonlance campaign. We're showing these off. And look, again, different sizes, different shapes. I love this. Here's, here's a banner. So the uh, the Kingfisher Festival is kicking off when you start, when you when you get to the town of Vogler after your session zero. Uh, there are banners and bunting and all kinds of things hanging up, and they've just thrown in an example of what it might be. Uh, this has been in here a little while now, but the uh, it's, it might, the, the tip there is a little bit dented. But yeah, really, really nice. Some kind of hand-drawn things as well. Uh, obviously, this is printed, but this is uh, a different type of paper. Marked up with Wizards Copyright on there as well. This is So this is where you start. Here's Vogler, and then you go to Calaman. Now this isn't the main map, you can see in the box here, I'll get to the big main maps. This is some extra content. We've got Battle of the Bards, again at Vogler for the Kingfisher Festival. You can make it more fun. It is supposed to be uh, war-torn, war uh, but you can show off as much as you wish. But look at that, they just keep coming, look. How many do we have? And then we finally get down to some of the maps. Now the maps are printed, um, I don't know, it's kind of kind of like a laminate, I guess. This is the town of Vogler, but these are taken straight out of the book. You get this style of map is in the main book. Um, obviously they're also in the, in the Beaver and Grimm modules, but they have um, printed this one on, on this. This one is, is out for you. You can put your own notes on the back or allow your players to do it, which is really, really nice. It is white clean, but it's a, it's a nice way of giving them something around the table that they can use, a physical map. 
which is always really, really nice. And I love this. I, I, I fell in love with the artwork and how they've done the maps uh, and the battle maps in this, in this um, not edition, I think it's just where, where they progress things. Uh, Dragonlance, I think, is probably my second favorite story now. Storm King's Thunder is, is my first. It, it goes all over the continent in, in Forgotten Realms. Um, for Dragonlance, I loved it as well. It is such a cool adventure. It's really fun uh, adventure. Loads of fighting, loads of uh, hard choices that players have to make. Lots of different locations. Lots of different things can happen. And I love that. Now here we have uh, the Northern Wastes. This is Calaman region. So this is where the adventure pretty much takes place. It starts in Vogler, which is here. You go down to Calaman, and then you've got the Northern Wastes. So if you think about that, plus the coastline as well. They don't go all over Ancelon. Ancelon is huge. And I'll, I'll show you that because there is a map. But I love just the, the edging of the map, the compass. It is gorgeous. The camera doesn't do it justice on how much color is in there. It, uh, is actually involved in here. How much detail? I mean, look at that. It's nice. And this is a map that you can actually put on the table. Give it to your players on the reverse side. Yeah, they can make their own notes and things for the, what, what their party, what the campaign is doing. Um, this is a, a section for later on. So you get to call, go to a place called the City of Lost Names, which is an ancient city. I'm not going to dwell too much on that because it is a bit of a spoiler. My players are not there yet. We also have additional content. So, as well as um, those bits that you've seen, there is also uh, these. These are the airbound mounts. Um, and I've just remembered that there is something else that needs to go in there, which I need to uh, see if I can find that somewhere. I don't know where I put it. I think it's because we're using that at the moment, actually. Oh, it's over here. Um, I'll come to that in a sec. I'll throw that in. There we go. You didn't see it, honest. Airborne mounts. So um, this, I believe, was added by Beedle and Grimm. This airborne mounts is not part of the original book. This is additional content to help you um, of these. Okay, so there's a breakdown of how to use the, the Dragonals, which is potentially something you can ride. I'm not going to go too into that, into, into, into that. Here's some extra games you can use. Again, Kingfisher Festival, uh, what games your players could could be uh, could get up to. Um, they do suggest a few games in the book. I, I do enjoy these ones. I think this is uh, I think this is great, especially Battle of the Bards, which relates to that flyer that you saw as a handout. Some notes on the book. Every page it kind of has notes as well, so you can you can use them for whatever. A DM never has enough paper or notes handy. Night of Terror. So this is later on. Uh, this is chapter seven. It says so there. <laughs> Where different things happen during the night. And I think that's great. I think rather than leave it up to the DM, you can just have a few things uh, happen. Here's some handy, handy tools for you to use. And I love that. So just a few things to, to introduce into, into, bits and, into, into that chapter. Now, I mentioned original content. Beale and Grimm's also put together, they write these themselves, a series of short stories. Now, they've called them Towers from the Warehouse. You, If you've got any of the Beale and Grimm's previous adventures, box sets, you will find this somewhere. It may not be like this. It may just be loose sheets of paper. Uh, it may be A3 unfolded, but they've started to kind of put them into a booklet. Now, I love that, guys. Um, I love seeing your stories. I want to see some more. But we will be running these as well. So do again, if you want to see how these play out, they're kind of like one shots. Um, check out our channel. Please do uh, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your neighbours, tell the people at uh, work or at school or at college or at uni. Uh, tell your pets, the cat next door, the people at the bus stop. Tell them all. And you get a very, very simple breakdown of information. And I love it. I really, really do. I think it's, I think it's great. So that is useful. Coming back to the original book again, there is a selection of sidekicks. They've added a bunch of six sidekicks that you can use. Uh, they are sidekicks, not pre-gens. So be careful on that. 
Now, what Beetle and Grimm have done, they have printed these off. Really, really nice. Um, they've printed these off as separate handouts. So if you have a party of one, two, three players, and you need an extra player, and you can't actually get one, or a player can't make it that session, use a sidekick, introduce the character, bring him in. You've got some fantastic artwork, a little bit of background, all of their stats, and what you can do to level them up. There is even some artist uh, artist kind of sketches behind that. The artist sketches are in the back of the main book, just to see like the making of behind the scenes. And Beat the Grimms have kind of put them together in, in this in this way. And I absolutely love that. So there is Andor or Andir, there's Ayuk, uh, there's Hig or Hrig, there's Temble, Tem Temble, Levna, who's a knight, and Iriad. And each one is different, but what we are going to be doing, and if you, if you've made it this far in the video, well done. Hope you enjoyed it so far. Do, uh, do like and subscribe. If you would like to be a guest player, come and join us. Get in touch. Come and join us. And one of these sidekicks could be yours to play. Ooh, he says. So get in touch and, uh, and join us for a game. Now, there's more. We're not even at the bottom of the box yet. There's more. We talked about maps and battle maps. Now, there's two things that you get in this particular edition. It's not a platinum edition, so you don't get the full size maps. What you do get are some cut down, some cut down sized battle maps, and we'll come on to that. Now, every DM needs one of these. These are the things that tells you what's going on. So here's raided catacombs, for example. I'm just going to pick up one, one, uh, one at random. As we go through, you can see the labels. You've seen these in the books. You know what it says. And you'd find a page and it tells you the breakdown. What this does is you can write on it. Okay, so just like the previous maps you saw, it's dry wipe, wet wipe. It means you can scratch on there. And then you can see, uh, just make your own notes of what is in these rooms. So I do that. I clip this to a, to a clipboard. I clipboard? Clip. Yeah, that's right, clipboard. And then I can keep this, I can keep track of it. I, I know where, where villains are, because I use red. I know where treasure is, because it's green. So it's, it's worth kind of keeping a hold of, and I can track the fight that way. I don't have to keep looking at the module or the book. It's out for me to, to hold. If you need any additional notes, you can write it on there, or a different piece of paper. But all of the maps are broken down in this way, or broken out into, into these sheets easy way for you to do that and this is, and this is a good example actually of all the different types so here's a fort over here on the left this is a, a mini dungeon crawl here you've got another camp camp carrion clay and it's just a nice way for you to see all the battle maps that are coming up and that, again another little uh, mini dungeon crawl mini du uh, there's a cave the blue mole cave the bastion of Tachesis. A flying citadel again you just break it down they're all one-sided you just break it down into the bits that you need another mini dungeon crawl slightly bigger i guess here's a mansion that's been dilapidated or collapsed and all of these you get these in the book anyway but all of these for this edition are broken out into it's already done for you that you know you can print them off yourself yeah you can go to dnd beyond for example uh, you can save all the maps and images there and you can print them off for both the dm and the player but here it's all done. It's all done uh, in immaculate condition, great quality uh, and absolutely fantastic. Now, we are finally nearing the bottom of the box. I'm gonna move that, that's just a piece of cardboard just to keep everything kind of straight and safe and protected. Here is the map. This is about an A2 sized fold out map. It is one sided. So if you can get a frame, I, this is the kind of thing, if you've got a gaming room, a dedicated gaming room, I would put this in a frame and put it up. This thing is huge. Now, I'm not going to be able to show all of it on screen, but I will kind of zoom in on some of the... I mentioned the Northern Wastes. Here's the Northern Wastes. There's Vogler. There's Calaman. Now, look how big. And it opens up on this side. It opens up on this side. This is the entire entirety, the continent of Anselm on the world of Kryn. This is huge! But look, look at the, this is one of those like scroll, decorated scroll pieces. Look at this. There is Tachesis. Oh! 
wow on the edge of your map and then on the other side it's really really nice you have this one look estelaris uthmathas my life is my honor or something like that but again all you see got all this map edging around the side like it's a, I don't know if it's a Bayou tapestry or something like that. I think I think it's it, it, absolutely gorgeous. Here's something else that I like, is it shows sea monsters. You know when we used to see those on the old maps? Look, sea monsters. I love that. Absolutely love that. Got a map key at the top. Um, it's great. It's beautiful. Really lovely piece. Very, very happy to have that. I this will be going up on the front. I don't have a get dedicated games room. Uh, we're kind of working on that at the moment, but uh, when it's up, this will be one of the maps. I think this, uh, the Sword Coast from Forgotten Realms, will be going up. Um, I have an I have a Pathfinder map that'll be going up as well. Glorium. Um, yes, absolutely love it. Now here I mentioned, so you don't get the full battle maps per se, but you get some of these maps which are blown up. So that miniatures, uh, let's see if I've got my Drist. Where's Drist? Here he is. Perfect. So perfect sizing, and it's just in there. These are not uh, redone. These are taken from the book itself. But a nice size you can fit down on the table in front of you just for that one battle scene. Again, it doesn't give you the whole map. It gives you the battle scene. This is like a boss fight kind of thing. If you flip it over, they are all double-sided. Here's another floor to this to this area. And in the bottom corners, it tells you which map it belongs to. So they've done that for all of the maps that are in here. Let's show a few more. They are all, um, this, one's, this one again is kind of A2, I guess. Here's the mansion that we saw, allowing your players to mark, put around. And you can see, look how nice it comes out on, on the screen. It is lovely. There's a lot of detail here. Getting people around here, um, I think, is well worth it. Now, these have been uh, put on here. They, they are double-sided. There we go. There's the Blue Moor Cave. Really, really nicely done. Um, the material is... Um, if It's not textured. It's not like the, the handouts. This is... But it is thicker. It's thicker than normal paper. It has like it, it definitely feels like there's a coating on there. It's not, not a laminate, so I wouldn't write on these but um it's thicker than normal paper it's not like a, a thin poster paper it's thicker than that you could probably rip it if you tried but uh, don't try <laughs> is, is my advice and i love this symbol uh, the compass rose oh absolutely brilliant again you can see here how it comes out lovely 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 map nice and clean and clear i do like it a lot now while we are playing digitally online for the first time of Dragonlance, we've put in these uh, into some BTT, but um, we're also doing, it's not gonna be at the same time, I think we'll get to chapter three online, and then by that point, we should be able to get around the table and we'll be playing it again with new players. It could be you if you're in the UK, who knows? But yeah, really looking forward to, uh, to being able to use these and, and loving it. My Frost Maiden players, if you want to see some of the Frost Maiden stuff we've done, go and check out our Instagram. It's uh, Instagram.com slash Bad Badges. And you'll see some of our shots there from my, Insta uh, from my Instagram game, from our Frost Maiden game. Uh, and again, you can use these maps on anything. You don't just have to use them for Dragon Ants. Just because you buy it for Dragon Ants, uh, yeah, I'm one of those people too. <laughs> but. Uh, don't be afraid to use them in other things. When you need a particular map and it happens to be there, use it. Use it for a one shot. These make great, uh, great things for one shots. And there you have it, people. That is whoo, everything which is in this book. Let's recap as we put them all back in. We have some uh, battle maps. We have some big maps. We have some DM maps for your planning needs, which are absolutely gorgeous. Loads of them, I didn't count how many are in there, but loads of them, but you can see there, there's me kind of uh, mapping things out. We're, we're coming up to Wheel Watch uh, Outpost. Um, I think it's in, it's in the second chapter. Uh, so yeah, we're starting in spring, so probably by the summertime we should be on, on here. 
So uh, again, I don't know when this particular video is going to go up, but it is worth checking out. I'm going to leave this out because I'm still reading it. Uh, that, 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 that. There's some extra content in there for you as well. There's some more maps. Look at this. It all goes in. Here are the wondrous, gorgeous handouts, um, which are all from, some of them are, uh, one of them is actually for the uh, adventure. At least one of them is for the adventure. No, I think two of them are because, yeah, there's a, there's a I'll, sh I'll show you some of the adventures in here. So we've got Unfinished Business, which is a short story about uh, a fort, uh, a place called Fort Dyer. We have Sacred Ground, uh, which is about some druids. And then we have Prisoners of War, which is based uh, based in and around the Northern Wastes, which I'm really looking forward to, uh, to playing. There we go. And again, look, you can see all different sizes as they fit into the box. The box is slightly bigger than A4. Gives you an idea. It's slightly bigger than A5, for example. As I just throw these in there. Look at that. And I love the fact some are folded as well. You can just kind of hand it to one player and they can look at it first. They're the first person to kind of see it. I love the, the, the excitement on the players' faces when they get to know something before anyone else. Um, it's great. It's great for storytelling. It's great for the game. You can see, look, 60 um, encounter cards there. We have some, uh, we have the mission reports. We have some artwork. We have the artifacts, all the metal artifacts can go in there like that. We have the atmosphere artwork. We have the modules. Look at this. Wow, we have some extra information, some like quick notes, handy information to have. We have whatever, uh, all the breakdown of what is in the box plus where you need it. This is the letter from the guys themselves. All the things that you need, the bonus encounters, the sidekicks, everything in there. There's an advert for everything else that goes on in there. And you also get Towson Warehouse. I'm not gonna put that in straight away. And of course, the gorgeous lid that goes on top like that. Wow. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. It is a big one. Um, and I'll see you again soon. Remember to like and subscribe and all that jazz. See ya.